Is every vote of equal strength? Do you have any idea what the rate commission said? Or indeed what it is? Should the election commission be independent? Was equality removed from our constitution? Is the election commission compromised? My name is GK, GK Gunnison, and this is GK TV. Today's topic is gerrymandering. Is every vote of equal strength? Let's start with understanding what gerrymandering is. It is a process by which someone in authority changes the borders of an electoral area and he fiddles with the number of votes within a particular constituency so that a particular party or a group of persons will win no matter how bad the odds are. So, what is the Rate Commission? That commission was an independent commission set up by the British government and it was responsible for drafting the Malaysian or as it then was known as the Malayan constitution before the 31st of August 1957. That was when Malaya, the Federation of Malaya, gained independence from the UK. The commission was appointed for a purpose. It was appointed to draft a constitution for a fully self-governing and independent Federation of Malaya. So the first question is, what is the difference between two parliamentary seats? I'm talking about the 14th general election which was concluded in the year 2018. One was the Kappa parliamentary seat and the other was a Putrajaya one. Kappa had in GE 14 124,983 voters. Putrajaya had 27,314 voters. So comparing the two seats and the number of voters apple for apple, for every single parliamentary seat, Kappa had 4.6 times more voters than Putrajaya. One vote in Putrajaya was equal to 4.6 votes in Kappa. Two voters in Putrajaya could knock out nine voters in Kappa. If we cross compare Bangi, P102 in Slango, it has 178,790 voters. But Igan, P207 in Sarawak has 19,639. A single vote in Igan is good enough to cancel out nine votes in Bangi. Is this equality? Is this a fair way to conduct elections? That is the question. Next question I want to ask you is, is there equality guaranteed in our federal constitution? Equality is guaranteed in the Malaysian constitution and it is in these words, all persons are equal before the law and entitled to the equal protection of the law. So compared to Putrajaya, is a man in Kappa protected? Does he get the same rights? Now this equality applies to all situations, including that of elections, you would agree. In elections, the principle of equality has given rise to the long held one person one word principle. It means the value of every single vote in each constituency must have the same strength and intensity as any other vote in every other constituency. Now that is a fundamental right to ensure that all votes are of equal strength. Every parliamentary constituency should contain roughly the same number of voters. So now I want to speak to you about the third point, equality, electoral quota, which is called EQ and the Raid Commission report. Now the method by which constituencies are drawn according to voter population is by the use of a formula known as the electoral quota. That was recommended by the Raid Commission and accepted by the representatives from Malaya. So much so that they adopted it into the constitution to safeguard it. In 1957, the Reed Commission recommended the concept of equality. They formulated the equitable distribution of constituencies between each state. 
on the basis of population and the election. They said, once a certain number of voters were assigned to a constituency, the commission proposed that differences among constituencies must be limited to no more than 15%. So if one constituency had 100,000, the other could have no more than 115,000 voters. So that was the average in each state. These principles were embedded into the federal constitution by three clauses and they were in Article 116. Subparagraph 5 of Article 116 defined what electoral quota was. You must remember this was in the constitution. The formula was the total number of registered voters divided by the total number of seats available in parliament. So Article 116 subparagraph 5 read Electoral quota means the number obtained by dividing the number of electors in the entire federation by the total number of constituencies or for a state, the total number of state constituencies. Article 116, subparagraph 3 and subparagraph 4 in these words. Constituencies shall be allocated to several states in such manner that the electoral quota, EQ, of each state is as nearly equal to the electoral quota of the federation as it can be without causing undue differences between the population, between the quota of the state and the population quota of the federation. Now, Article 116, subparagraph 4, interestingly said, each state shall be divided into constituencies in such manner that each constituency contains the number of electors as nearly equal to the electoral quota of the state as may be after making due allowances for the distribution of the different communities and for differences in the density of population and the means of communication. You know, some states, they are rural areas. It's very difficult to go from one place to the other. But the limitation was the allowance was made shall not increase or reduce the number of electors in any constituencies to a number of more than 15%. So if you had 100,000 in one place, you could have 85,000 in one place. When the UK monarch and the Malay rulers consented to the Reid Commission report, the UK parliament drafted the new federal constitution of Malaya in June of 1957. That draft was presented, debated and enacted by the Federal Legislative Council of Malaya on August 15, 1957. We can assume that the Reed Commission report forms the womb of the Federal Constitution. The duly enacted Federal Constitution, as you know, took effect on the 27th of August. The next point I want to speak about is the independence of the Election Commission. One of the requirements the Reed Commission said was, the election should be conducted by a body known as the Election Commission or the EC. Now, they explain what was the work of the EC. This is how they put it. Before any election can be held for the House of Representatives, they want Raya. It will be necessary to delimit constituencies and prepare the electoral roles for each constituency. We recommend, they said, that an independent commission should have the duty and responsibility of carrying out these matters and of organizing and conducting elections. And they said, this commission should be called the Election Commission and should consist of three members. The commission said that the EC must be entirely free of government influence and was to be appointed and removed by the king. I would remind you of these words at the end of this video. They thought it was crucial that the EC ought to be wholly independent and this is what they said. We regard it as a matter of great importance that this commission, this EC, should be completely independent and impartial. We therefore recommend, said the Reed Commission, that the election commission should be a permanent body, that its members should be appointed by the young Dipartuan Agung and should be persons whom all democratic parties and communities have complete confidence. The independent position of its members should be recognized by providing that they can only be removed from office in the manner provided 
with regard to a judge of the federal court. Imagine that. The security of tenure was almost guaranteed and that the salaries cannot be diminished during their term of office but shall be charged on the consolidated fund. They said that. Now such an election commission should be entirely independent and they said self-sustaining. It could not be oppressed by the government. And since these rights were anchored within the constitution, it was thought that the concept of equality remained safe. It was not. So I ask you, do you have, as the commission report says, complete confidence in the EC? Well, what say you? Next, I want to speak to you about the removal of the equality of votes in 1962 and the loss of the powers of the election commission. In 1962, the Dark Ages intervened. It was some years after the formal adoption of the federal constitution. In 1962, the Alliance Party, the forerunner to the previous BN regime, garnered a two-thirds majority. And you know what the first thing they did was? That regime extensively amended the constitution. It removed the equality votes clauses in Article 116, subparagraphs 3, 4 and 5 and other related clauses. These removals were designed, as it was then said, the government said, to give the government a free hand. To give the government a free hand to do what? The sad answer is to gerrymander. In 1962, the problem started to this day, it hasn't been removed. Far-reaching amendments ensured that the number of voters in rural constituencies were structured to have as few as 50% of the number of voters in urban constituencies. Lin Kitsang once called them super constituencies. Importantly, the final say on constituency delineation was wrenched from the EC. Its independence was eviscerated. From its once independent hands, delineation powers were handed over to an impatient and powerful parliament, which could make serious and prejudicial decisions on how to change electoral boundaries based only on a simple majority in parliament. The very heart of parliamentary democracy was in 1962 cheerfully breached and with impunity. This is the clearest example of the distinction between rule of law and rule by law. Not all laws are just. In some, read election laws. The spirit of justice animating the law would have fled, leaving nothing but a rotting carcass also here. Thus enfeebled, the election commission was forced to submit proposals on any deviations to the prime minister. The prime minister would then present these to parliament with or without modification, the law said. And that was an open license to gerrymander. If the PM modified the EC's proposals, the EC could do nothing. And so the EC became the ruling party's handmaiden. Such recommendations as the PM made would be approved by a simple parliamentary majority. All entrenched constitutional protections were lost in an instant in 1962. A pall of darkness hung over the nation for 60 odd unrelenting years. It came to a head not just over two years ago. On the 28th of March 2018, Parliament passed major motions to support serious gerrymandering activity. The EC did not even give enough time for public consultation. The motion was bulldozed through Parliament in two hours flat. Each side was allowed to speak on a matter that formed the heart of democracy, a total of one hour. The Speaker, Yang Ahmad Burahman, Amin Pandikar, Aman Mulia, swept aside all protests. Only five MPs from each side were allowed to speak up for 10 minutes each. Of 11 MPs out of 222 MPs spoke on a matter that was of national interest and on the principle of equality. All of it is recorded in the Hansar. The famous Azmin Ali of Gomba spoke for Slango. He complained that the total number of voters in Slango was 2,418,611 divided into 56 DUN seats. The state EQ was therefore 43,190. However, 
33 or 59% of the doomed seats had been inflated to more than 43,190 voters per seat. That was unjust. Guaning MP for Bagan spoke of Pulapinang. He demonstrated the reverse of gerrymandering activities. In the Dune seat of Ayrapute, there had been almost 15,000 voters, but it had now been reduced to 12,752. He contrasted that with the Dune seat next to it, Payatrubon, that had 41,707 voters, at least 350% larger than Ayrapute. It meant one voter in Ayrapute could knock off 3.5 voters in Trubon. His complaint was that they were packing all the pro-opposition voters into one super constituency. Dr. Ong Kian Ming, MP for Sardang, complained that in the Lumut parliamentary seat, a racially homogeneous constituency was altered in such a way that he now had 71% of a particular race all in all. Opposition seats were impossibly packed with more voters and pro-BN seats were shrunk so that it was easier for BN to win. Think not that this is a recent or an isolated incident. It's been going on for decades and the EC has been sitting by, shackled and silent in its cage. All this was done just over one month before GE14. If that is not patent gerrymandering, what is? What happened then? We all watched it on television. On the 9th of May 2018, when confronted by clamoring victors from Pakatan Arapan who asked for public announcements, you know what the EC officials said in refusing to sign Form 14 under the Election Act? This is what they said. Kami Tungu Arahan. We await instructions. Whose instructions? Think about that. Think about equality. Think about the EC and think about whether or not the EC is independent. This is not the end of it. I've got a second video on this coming soon. Thank you very much for watching. Do have a good day. If you like this video, press like. If you haven't already, subscribe, ring that bell. And could I please ask you to share this video as widely as possible with all your friends so that we will all understand that we need to have fair and free elections in this country. Good day.